Hey, what is going on, YouTubers? Jay here from MJ Tech today with another car stereo review for a Toyota Highlander from 2007 all the way up to 2014. This one is about $363 approximately and it has pretty decent specifications. And yes, this is another one from that company that I've been showing now for the past almost like two years now. This is iDoing. And out of every car that I have installed this radio on or this brand, none have failed, guys. They all have been family cars. In this particular case, this uh, Toyota Highlander came from the auction. So we're going to be hooking up this radio. This one has a 10.2 inch screen. It has Android 10, which is a little bit outdated by now, especially with Android 13 that just rolled out. So I wish that moving forward, they can come with at least Android 11. And uh, it comes with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. You can upgrade it up to 128 gigabytes. And they come in two different uh, modems uh, available right now. You can get 5G modem and you can get the 4G modem as well. It, uh, it does specify that on the site when you go on the link that I have provided. So that's very cool. And in case you guys need to contact them directly, just follow one of these phone numbers typically i use whatsapp so we have here the typical wiring harnesses as you guys can tell this time i see here or i think that we can use the factory usb hub maybe and if you guys look closely here we don't have harnesses that goes uh, to the radio directly from the car that's because the car harness will plug in directly into this radio so yes the back it's already made for this particular unit so it makes it look more like a factory unit guys this is unbelievable so anyways here's the radio I know a lot of you guys are gonna be confused as to why it looks like an ordinary unit but it is not if you look here there are some cutouts on the sides right here okay kind of like angles down like this and that's because the bezel came on a separate box guys so this is the unit right here again 10.2 inches it has an OLED panel and it is a 720p resolution the display looks amazing you get the soft touch keys along with the integrated microphone we might not be using that one and on the back side here this is what I mean guys we have here the uh, 4g modem antenna now the cool part about this unit is that the car harnesses they plug directly in here so yes, it is just a plug and play. You don't have to use that uh, typical harness that converts it. It goes now directly into the unit. So here's the bezel guys, okay? So the radio plugs in here, then you use the included screws to attach it. So it connects very easily. So let's assume I'm about to do it. All you have to do is put it here and check that out. So we get here the side knobs as well. We do have wires on the back side that need uh, to get connected, I guess, to one of those harnesses that goes on the back side of the radio in order for these knobs to work correctly. And then we can make it look prettier and hide all this very nice. So on the top here is where your, uh, I think this is your hazard switch or maybe the clock uh, screen goes installed up here then you had the vents and everything else would be a plug and play so now that we know what this looks like let's go ahead and jump into that uh, Toyota Highlander check it out and do the installation part well here we have the Toyota Highlander in great condition this is the auction vehicle and uh, this one is my brother's car or new car he totaled the uh, GMC so uh, this is what we're going to work with. We already have everything we need inside of the vehicle. Again, I just wanted to show off the car. That is in pretty good shape. It rides excellent too. So vehicles like this, if you own one, I mean, this is a 2009 model. But this radio will fit from any of these vehicles, I believe, starting 2008 all the way up to 2013. I could be wrong, but I think that's about correct. Uh, so yes, let's go inside and we already have, like I said, everything inside of here. 
Uh, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket with the extension, some pry opening tools. We might need some more stuff later like Phillips screwdrivers and whatnot, but I think that's going to be right now what we need to take all this apart. So the first thing you must do is put the key on the ignition here. You're going to move here the, uh, the shifter uh, to the drive position. Make sure you put your emergency brakes on. The next thing we have to do here is remove these two side panels because underneath we have some screws and to do so you start here with the side of the glove compartment i might have to go around to remove it but basically what we're doing here is sticking this pry opening tool into the sides like so and then just gently continue to pry until we can get them off like so it's not that hard you just got to be patient there we go, this one is coming off already. Now we gotta work on this side here. Let's see. All of this, guys, it takes patience and more patience and for you to be gentle as well because if you crack something, well, now you have an extra expense to replace it. There we go. So we got this piece removed. As I said, it's not that hard. And so we're just going to remove the lighter plug as well. And voila, check this out. On the sides here, we have some clips. It looks like this vehicle was unassembled before because the clips are quite loose and it comes out very easily. Just remember where all the plugs go. Uh, typically, these are just like one size plug and you can't get confused when putting it back together. So let's go ahead now and remove this here and now we got the ac control buttons already removed now our next step here will be to use one of the included pry opening tools and start here from the very top all right guys so here after some try we finally got the corner to come out like i said it just requires patience and more patience and it is best if you guys have like several different types of pry opening tools where you can pull it out but as you guys can tell you have to be very careful because you can easily damage the dashboard it's like super easy to do that so the vents they come out like this we had to preserve these clips because uh when we put everything back together you won't be able to uh rebolt this just because of the fact that uh, at least the upper bolts you're not going to be able to put them back on because of the fact that now everything is going to be one piece if you look here at this radio this is the one that we're going to be hooking up to the car everything is one piece it's not like this one here where the vents are separated so just keep that in mind guys i don't know why they decided to go that route because i think they had clearance enough here to still make it to where the factory one fit it but hey, that's how they designed it, and that's how most likely it will stay like. Uh, anyways, we have here two 10 millimeter bolts on the top and two at the bottom. Very simple, very straightforward. That's what I like about Toyotas. They are not complicated vehicles whatsoever. There we go. We just got this part removed. Now all we have to do is unplug this on the back side of the unit here okay we have one plug there then we have the antenna the fm antenna i can tell already that we're not going to need certain plugs that came included for higher trims and by higher i mean like luxury trims this is the basic uh, toyota uh, highlander First things first, grab your 8 millimeter socket. Again, I prefer to have an impact drill, it makes things a lot easier. And we will remove these three 8 millimeter bolts, like so. And it looks like I said before that somebody has worked on this car before because these uh, uh, bolts here are stripped a little bit. Now let's do the same thing here on the other side. 
And it looks like this will connect on the uh, new radio only towards the bottom side. But this is a must. Very good. There we go. And it comes right off. Now, our next step here is to momentarily, for now, grab a very tiny flat screwdriver, lift on this pin, and then you're going to pull this thing out like so. All right? Nothing hard to do. So now we got the bracket out. Before we transfer that, we have to get here the hazard lights button out. So there's like two metal clips right in here. You simply press in and spit them right out. I mean, you can't get it wrong like I did. Let's see here. There we go. And then you simply and gently pull the wire out. Voila, guys, just like magic. Very easy to do. Uh, let's see, we only have one more thing to do here, and that's going to be removing all these uh, clips. They have to come out in order for you to reuse them. And, well, congratulations. At this point, uh, you won't need this part any longer. Now it is time to reassemble on the new unit. To remove the AC vent, it's something that I would recommend uh, doing before installing the bracket that will hold this uh, screen which uh, provides the uh, time I believe in this vehicle and certain other vehicles it provides the outside temperature as well so this you will reuse like I said before it is needed no doubts about it now to remove the AC vents you're gonna have a couple of uh, little uh, clips like this one here you can see on the new bezel well, they are located exactly here at the same location. So with that same flat screwdriver, you simply lift up. Try to put pressure towards the outside so that when you lift it up, you can feel the vent popping out little by little, like so. So again, this is super important that you guys follow these directions. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of issues uh, getting this thing out. So right here we just got that area removed now we're gonna pull on this side here and voila just like magic guys this is what the final verdict looks on this radio super simple the bracket does hook up but you only uh, will be able to install one screw on it so the screw here looking at it from the back this is the left side and it says uh, right side here on this bracket, but you can see it right there where I got it hooked up. And then on the other side, it'll hook up about the same position. And everything did align quite well. What I like about this bracket being reused is that at least I can hook up the bottom screws. And this is what it looks like, guys. So far, I also got here the uh, hazard light switch installed along with the airbag lights and all that good stuff. And I also reinstalled here all the uh, clips, okay, the ones that we removed from the upper bezel here where the vents are. And on the actual radio, everything plugged and play here. You can see all the yellow clips. And one more thing, guys, when you hook up here for the uh, buttons, okay, these buttons don't come working out of the box. You need to hook them up to this harness which connects on this side of the radio. The harness has a yellow connector and this will also hook up your reverse camera and you have here the reverse signal wire as well. So these two are for your reverse camera uh, aftermarket of course. Then for the buttons you're gonna see uh, three wires in total. One has a harness that looks like this. It's a white little harness and this one here guys you had to hook it up okay it comes uh, out okay it comes disconnected uh, with the bezel included so it goes here on this connector like so all right you simply plug it in and that's all you have to do then for the uh, ACC you're gonna have 
one tag here that says ACC for the uh, one coming from the button and then you're going to have the ACC from the harness. Make sure these go together. I like to use uh, these self-soldering connectors. It makes things a lot easier. So we got that connected. And finally, you will have a black wire that has the GRN or GND, excuse me. Uh, GND stands for ground. Here, what I did is that I hooked up this wire to this bolt on the radio because it connects to the chassis of the car and they are working. Now I can increase and decrease the volume and also you can change apps. You can do many things using these two buttons and that's how you get them working. So as you guys can observe, everything is hooked up on here. Uh, one more thing is that you have two eight millimeter bolts here on this upper display in which it is adjustable. What you have to do is loosen them up, then push them more towards the edge here of the bezel. So you push in and then you tighten them up and I got it perfectly aligned. You can see how there's no gaps here on the sides. Uh, when you first hook it up, there might be some gaps, but that's how you fix it up. So hopefully this is not a lot of information to absorb at the same time. If it is, I do apologize. You can just pause the video or reverse it if you have to. But yes, guys, uh, when it comes here to the radio itself, we got everything hooked up and ready to be put on. All we are waiting now is for Amazon to deliver our reverse camera and the socket that I will be installing on this side of the vehicle. Let me show you. So the socket will get connected here. We're going to eliminate this one. And then we're going to put the one with the USB ports on here so that way we can plug them in and use them with wired CarPlay and wired Android Auto. The process is super simple. You simply snap this off. It is held by clips. You simply put your hands like on the front, lift it up, and then continue along all the sides. And then uh, it has just one connection here on the front. You take that off and the whole bezel comes out so that we can remove the socket and again place the other one on here. All right guys, so as we can observe right here, we got most of the harnesses connected. The purple one, that's for the single USB port in which we already connected here to this socket at the middle console. The next one here, which is the light, uh, that's like a, I don't know, like a teal maybe. Then that one is for the 4G uh, SIM card. The next one here, this is for the dual uh, USB uh, port. What I did is that the single USB port, I connected it to one of the ends. And then the one that comes with the double USB port, which uh, typically these are for charging, that one I only use one side of it and connected it to the middle console port, okay? Uh, the yellow one, like I said before, that's the one that controls the knobs. It controls the uh, ground here for the knobs as well. We got the reverse camera and the trigger wire connected to it along with the uh, microphone harness right here, which is the light blue one, the baby blue color one. Then on the top here, the far left, that's where the GPS gets connected, the middle and the one on the far right, that's for 4G. And so all the antennas are being hooked up. We got everything pretty much uh, set on here. So this one, it's connected right here. I'm not sure if you guys are able to see this. I try to set my GoPro to the uh, best angle possible. So there we go. We got two harnesses connected. And the last one goes on the upper side of the unit. Let's get this one connected as well. There we go. Now we are truly done here. Let's plug. Let's leave everything for now. The way it is, you can see how the hazard lights, they work. That's very good. Before we push everything in, let's see if the radio comes on and then if you get any audio from it. I think that's a wire I forgot to hook up. You see, that's why it's always great to check before you finalize. And the wire that I forgot here is in fact the antenna, which is right over here, guys. Without the antenna, we can't do anything. There we go. It is a little bit hard. There we go. Now we got audio. Well, guys, the installation was a total success here for the Toyota Highlander. This is going to work from 2008 all the way up to 2013. 
and the fitment is absolutely perfect you can see right here all around the bezel there's no gaps there's no indication that this is an aftermarket radio and this is what i love about them guys this is why i have become a true fan and well this time it didn't disappoint either and the cool thing here is that we had that massive 10.2 inch display oled panel it comes with four gigabytes of ram 64 gigabytes of internal storage and i was able to hook up the reverse camera very easily i just ran the wire here on the right side of the vehicle or the passenger side all the way up to the trunk now the only thing is that this vehicle the way the lights are designed they are on the side of the vehicle and not on the lid or the back door which makes it a little bit harder to fish the wires through but i was able to do it and then once you find the reverse light make sure that you connect the positive and negative as well as the signal wire which is the red it goes with red as well you have to put them together and that's how you get the signal on the front as i showed you guys before we had that red wire that i connected to the blue wire that's going to be your signal so every time you place the vehicle in reverse then you get this image the second thing i did was install the modem for the 4g this is the first time i do it and that's because my brother had an extra sim card and he is using visible and as you guys can tell right there from the screen we have 4g network working and the modem is inside here so this is what we did we ran it on the side of the vehicle all the way to the glove compartment and there's the uh, sim card it is a micro size so you will need the adapter if you only have the nano sim card and that's pretty much it guys it works perfectly well you do get the data working everything is fully independent here and i also have it connected here via wi-fi to my network and you guys can see that the range is great make sure that you get those antennas up here so that way you get the best signal reception so now that we have talked about the reverse camera and the 4g functionality it comes with android 10 out of the box so if you go here into settings we go into system and then we go into devices info let's go back here once more let's go into about device and i believe that on here it's going to tell us that we have android version 10.0 as you guys can observe and here's the confirmation a little bit outdated but everything still functions on here android 10 still supports all of the applications and yes you can download things like netflix on here youtube just like we saw from the past as a matter of fact we have already uh, youtube working on here with the network and check this out guys it is loading right now and it does work perfectly well with no issues whatsoever this is the account right here and another thing we have which is something you guys are looking forward to is wired carplay and wired android auto i have here my google pixel and my iphone i have the iphone connected right now so if you go here into car link check this out verification approved and in a second i'll be connecting wirelessly so that you can see that carplay does work wirelessly but not android auto android auto can only work wired so now if i unplug it you see that it disappears now we're going to unplug this wire for the iphone and plug the one for the pixel and check this out guys now we simply unlock the device and we are prompted here with android auto check that out everything's working perfectly well guys let's see here let's go ahead and mute this for a second let's go back on here and let's go here into the music part let's pause it for a second and there you can see that again we have android auto working very fast and again it doesn't work wirelessly now when it comes here to the wireless car place i mentioned before for that you go into bluetooth bluetooth settings and then you're going to wait until it shows here the vehicle's information and hopefully it does it uh, fast enough let's go here into bluetooth let's see okay so if you click on search it'll find the iphone right here you can also click on syu android and then the passcode it'll be four zeros let's confirm that here allow and there we go guys we are connected already so if we go back into that application let's go here you can see that nothing is connected right now and it'll pair in no time so it says waiting on device it says connecting now verification approved but as you can tell this is why i prefer wired 
over wireless because it is a little bit faster but hey it does work as you guys can tell so we got here everything that carplay has to offer which is really 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 cool guys so again we got everything working perfectly well let's go ahead and exit out of here and then we have of course things like the radio station and the reception is working fine okay you can hear that right there you can mute it and then this button right we can use it for volume and that's pretty much it when you click it it doesn't do anything so this is volume and then this is to change different applications so we have bluetooth and then it goes into the uh media uh mode which is in case you have like an sd card installed or something of that nature you will see it right here the same thing goes for video and then it goes into the maps and back into the uh, station and then from here you can also switch different stations different channels that you may have if you go back it'll change it for you as well but again these buttons are super useful now when you turn on your headlights they don't uh, turn on i believe the radio that was here before didn't turn on either so that's that here's one cool feature that i've never seen on a radio that well this particular one has it and it is wired tethering yes this hub right here that i connected as you guys know well this one is for the data and it does connect carplay as well but you don't have to mix it with carplay at all I have here my hotspot connected as you guys can tell by this icon right here and we don't have a sim card i took it out just to test it and we're not connected to wi-fi on either device and so what i discovered is that it gives you these two arrows pointing towards the uh towards each side the right and the left and then it has three dots in the middle that's what the wired uh, tethering is so right here if i go into youtube check this out we have internet connection right here guys check this out that is crazy let's go here into the play store let's check the play store as well let's go right here that's chrome the play store check this out we can navigate throughout the whole entire system for a lot of people this is going to be incredibly useful i didn't know that these radios supported this and i just found out by accident thanks to my brother he uh, has been using this radio now for the past like i don't know three or four days approximately and he told me about it and i decided to add it on this video so that way you guys are aware yes you get wire tethering as well All you have to do is turn it on on your phone and make sure that your service provider supports it and you will get internet on your radio that way as well not just with the 4g modem and uh yeah guys everything else like i said functions very very nicely the navigation the bluetooth everything works great we even have a little equalizer here in which i prefer the one that has the uh rock option i think it gives you the best sound and yeah overall it is great guys let me know what you think about that 4g connection right there uh, with this being said i think that now we have completed here the unboxing installation and review of this i doing for the toyota highlander from 2008 all the way up to 2013 thank you so much for watching subscribe for more don't forget to click on that bell icon and i'll see you guys on my next one